So this is what we call development. So basically what that is, is they give you a shape or a prism and all you have to do is fold that prism open. Like remember in lower grades, like grade 7, 8, 9, everything lower than that, they were your teachers would give you little pieces of paper and you have to open that up. Okay. So that was interpenetration and development. And okay. this is just development. Okay. It's penetration and development is when you have two shapes and you have to take them apart and it's fold so open. Sure yeah. This one is a lot different. Um, the technique is different and everything, so you have to actually go and fold this one specific shape open. Okay. And then if you fold that shape back together, then it should be able to form the shape that you be doing. Okay. So obviously first we do is go to the question. Given the front view and top view of a portion of a duct showing a square to square transition piece. So as you can see, there's a square here and a square at the bottom. Okay. Then we have the starting point A on the scene. So if you look here, that's A. Okay. But you see that that's A over there as well. We're not drawing this at A. That's just the C. So what the C means it is the first part of where we're going to be opening this drawing up. Okay. But you see that they've given you center lines in the middle of that square. And there's those center lines. You said. Written. Okay. Um, instructions. Draw to a scale of one to one the given front view and top view of the given portion of the duct. Develop the surfaces of the transition piece in the direction of the arrow as shown at the top view. So here. That's the direction of the arrow. You see that? If you look here, that's the direction of the arrow. So obviously, we know that that line, AB, is going to then be our first line that we're going to be drawing here. Okay. But we can't do that without having this view, or these two views. Okay. And then make edge AB the seam. So then we know AB is our seam. Okay. Are you with me? So what do we do first? Read the, question, read the instruction, it says, draw a scale one to one, the given front and top view. Okay, so that means this. Okay, which one's the top view? Uh, one. Why? Because of my orthographic angle that's <laughs> used. This one. What angle is that? First. Why is it first? Because we can draw one in here. Okay. The circle, we can draw three, so then if that was in front, then that would be good. Remember that little hack. Okay. So, first of all, we look here and we see that this square is 30, which means each side is going to be 30 millimeters. Okay. So, we just go and draw that in quickly. Now I'm going to be drawing dark. You don't draw dark, you draw in construction. Okay. I'm drawing dark because it is a bit hard to see on the actual video. Okay. Now we have the first square. Now we see that there is one on the outside. Okay, that one says it is a square of 65. Okay. So you go and draw that square in. I like to go and extend my center lines a little bit, slightly. So that I don't know exactly where my point is. And then you can go and draw that square.
Okay, always make sure that you draw accurately. Okay, remember one millimeter out, and that can cause a big problem. Mm -hmm. Especially in development, because you need every single measurement. Okay, and then you just complete your view. Yeah, there we have our top view. I'm going to label this A because it is already A. Over here, see that? So we label A there, so I'm just going to keep that as A. Okay, so we don't get confused. Now we're going to go and draw our front view. Okay, now like I always like to say, I always like my drawings to be equal, okay? So I measure from there to there, get that measurement, put it in there. Okay. And we look at the side here, from the bottom to the top we have a height of 65 millimeters. So we're just going to put that in. Okay, now we have our given front and top view. So, like I always say, just go and tick it off. That way you know you've done that. Okay, now we want to go and label our um, top and front view. Okay, I'm just going to go and label mine. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay. Now you can see that they put all of these labels, so let's say the capital letters, all of them on a point of the square. Okay? You're lucky because we're looking at that square from the top, therefore that is my true length. Okay, so all of those lengths of the square are my true lengths. Okay, because you're going to have to find your true lengths. Keep that in mind because that's very important. You need to find your true length. So in other words, if you've got a, a shape that is irregular, you're going to have to go and find your true length of said shape. Okay. Then what you're going to want to do is go and divide each side into two equal parts. Okay? To do so, don't stress. It's very easy. 
So what you're doing is this point over here at A, you're just drawing a line down to C. Okay? Like that. Do you see that? Oh, it's a bit light. It'll be a little bit dark. Okay, you see that? Now we've divided that. It doesn't look equal because, because it's at an angle. Okay, but if you look at it straight, like over here, that's do it from that point to that point, then it would look equal. Okay. Now, you just go and do that for each side. Okay, now we've got that kind of looks like a ninja stuff. Okay. Now you want to go and label each segment. Okay. So this is my scene. A, B is my scene. Right? But this needs to be labeled. So we label that A. So we used capital letters before, so now we're just going to use small lowercase letters. Okay. So that would then be A. This little line that we just drew in. We'll label that B, and then, again, this segment is the same as that, so that stays A, okay? That stays A, that is then B, that stays A, that is B, that is A, and that is B. Do you understand why we label them all the same? Because all of those lengths are exactly the same length. Okay, if they were different lengths, you would then go and label them different letters, okay? But there's no need in going to um, label all of these things different letters if they're the same letter, okay? Um, then what you're going to want to do is take your compass and you measure from B to A and you draw a little R. Okay, so now you've drawn your little arc. You've drawn a little arc over there. You see that? Okay, now where that arc touches line BC, we take up to the top. Now this is very important. You must, you must pay attention to this. Okay, take it up to the top. Okay, and then you go and you draw a line from this point to there. Okay. But before I do that, what do I have to do to this top view? Or this front view? Label. Okay. So we already know that this is A B. Correct? Do we need to label anything else? No, because nothing else is really important. Okay. Keep it as A B. So you don't get confused. Too much labeling. So you go and you draw A line from there to there. Okay. What do you think we're going to label that? Uh, Lowercase a. Okay. Because look where we took it from. This line. Okay. So it's this little line, which is a. Okay. So we go and label that lowercase a. Okay. And now we have another irregular line that we need to go and plot in. That would be what? Mm -hmm. Lowercase b. Okay. So we have small b. Okay. Lowercase b. Right. <coughs> now we don't want to use this one because we've already got a curve here. So we're going to use basically this one. Okay? So we go again from B, and you plot your point to where lowercase b starts. So over there. 
Again, yeah. There. So that is all arc in there. Okay. And then what do we do? We draw it up. Okay. Now that I've drawn it up, what can you see? What can we see now that I've drawn it up? It doesn't touch any line at the top here. That's not a worry. You just extend it. This top line, you extend it to B. Just extend it to there. Okay. We're not going to use that top line for anything, but we just extend it so that we know where we, where we are. Okay. Then where do you think we take that line from? Do we take it from C and B or from there? Take it from C and B. Because why? Because we're working with A B. Okay. So then we take it from there to that point that we just made. And we label that lowercase b. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is measure those lines that we just drew in. So from there to A. And you're going to measure it. And you should get 70. Okay, so you actually go and write next to this one here as, as close as possible to this drawing because remember this thing still needs to spread out here. So you go and label A is equal to 70 millimeters. Okay. Then again, we go and measure B. We'll see that is 82. Okay. B is equal to 82. Millimeters. Okay. We're all good until this point. Mm. All understand. Any questions so far? Okay. Now we've done everything here that we need to do. Now we want to move on to the actual development of this given prism. Okay. Now to do so, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Okay. If you look at this, that's uppercase or cap capital A. Okay, they already give us an arrow in which we can start off. Okay, so the direction basically of the line that we need to draw. Okay, so just draw a line following that arrow. Okay, now we want to go and we say. A, B, you see there's B, they've given us B there at the bottom. Okay, so A, B is this line over here, A, B. But that's the lowercase a. You understand? So we take the measurement for the lowercase a, because that line is at an angle. But we want the true length. And the true length is that that we've got in there, 70 millimeters. Okay? So. Measure 70 millimeters for yourself. Put your metal point on point A and draw an arc over there. And that's your line for AB. So now you've already got one line. Okay. Now we want to move on to the next segment. So what you're going to do is A, B, C. So you just go according to the alphabet. A, B, C. Okay. So we measure from B to C. Okay? Put your metal point there on B and draw yourself an arc. Okay? Now there's an arc there. 
and make it a little bit darker for you. Okay, we have an arc there now. Okay, but we can't just go and draw randomly a line from B to that arc. Why is that? We don't know where that point actually is. Not a problem. We don't know where that point actually is. Okay, but what we do see is that C connects with A by using the lowercase b. Okay, so lowercase b we know is 82 millimeters. So we go and measure 82 millimeters. Put your compass on uh, A and draw a line, or draw an arc on that arc that we just drew there. Like that. See, there's a little X here. Okay. Now, we just go and and then that would be C. Okay. Are you with me now? Do you understand how to do this so far? Okay. Then obviously there's a line going from A to C. And that line we label lowercase b. Okay. Now, A, B, C is done. Now we need D. Okay. Again, remember, A to D is a true length. So you measure from A to D. Put your point on A. And draw in an off. Okay, now what do we have to do? We have D. We want C to D. We see that that is lowercase a. So again, like 70 millimeters. Put your metal point on C, draw an R the top there, and then connect those two points, and label that D. What am I labeling this line, AB? Lowercase a. Why? Because it's that line, lowercase a. Okay, and then if I join D and C together, like that, D and C, what would that then be? Lowercase a, because that's the line that we use to get that. Okay, and then you just keep repeating that. So, we have A, B, C, D, what do we need now? E, so there's E over there. Again, C to E is a true length. So we can go and measure C to E. From C, we can go and draw an arc in. What line am I getting using to find E? Small B. Small B. Okay, so lowercase D, which is 82. Make a point on D. Get my point where it crosses the other arc. And draw that in. And then there's obviously going to be a line from there to there. From D to E. We can go and label. This is E. And this is B. Okay, with me so far? Next step, you can tell me what's my next step. We have A, B, C, D, E. Yeah. We need F. So, D to F is A. True length. So, we can just measure it off of there. D to F from D. 
put in an arc. What are we going to use to get where that point is? Lowercase a, there we go, that is 70 millimeters. To that off, get your cross. Fill it in, and then obviously there's one connecting us to that. Label them F, and this one would be lowercase f. Okay, let's do another round of that. We have A, B, C, D, E, F. We need G. So, measure E to G. In an arc, what line are we using from F to G? Lowercase B, which is 82. And we're going to put in that on. Okay. Connect the two. Label. G. B. Next step, we want A, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we need H. So, from F to H, measure that in, and then we need what line? Small Small A, so 70 millimeters. My lines in. And then we go and label. That is H. H. And that is A. Okay. That's one, two, three segments. How many parts does a square have? So that means we have how many left? One. Okay. So we have one more to do. So we have B to C, C to E, E to G. Now we need G to B because the connecting points connect together again. Okay. So then we need G to B. So we're measure G to B. That what line do we use from G to B? Well, from H to B, lowercase b. Okay, so that is 82 millimeters. Maybe 2 millimeters. Connect all my lines. Label B and B. One more, we need H to A. H A. What line am I using from B to A? Case A. Mm 
multiple lines. This would then be A, A. Okay. And then that is the complete foldout as it should look like. Okay? Now, these lines, A, B, all in the middle, those would then be lighter than the outside lines. Okay, they're in construction. Because why? Because we originally can't see them on this drawing. Okay, important, remember to find your true length, always. You cannot draw this thing without finding your true length. Understand? You're with me. Um, so what you want to do is, over here, needs to be an arrow showing the direction of my seam. So, just put in an arrow there, and then you're done. All understand? Any questions? <laughs>